Welcome to Fume Hood Training. Before we go over the appropriate methods for handling chemicals in the clean room, let's briefly discuss the fume hood, its various parts, and how it operates. The three most important things you need to know about a fume hood is that it is here to protect you, your product or experiment, and the area around the fume hood in which you are working. How you operate in and around the fume hood will determine how effective it is at doing so. For the purpose of this presentation, we will discuss the slot ventilated fume hoods found throughout the Marcus and Organic Clean Room. However, you will find that the same basic principles apply to all fume hoods when it comes to safety. The slot ventilated fume hoods consist of the fume hood and the wet bench, which is the work area underneath the hood. The basic function of the slot ventilated fume hood is to have a continuous flow of clean air pulled from outside of the hood into the work area underneath the hood without letting the fumes out. The air is pulled through the saw to locate the base of the fume hood where the hood meets the back of the wet bench. Air is also pulled through the small holes found on the surface of the wet bench. The transparent shield, or sash, located on the front of the hood acts as a barrier against fumes and is also added protection against any chemicals that might splash when you are working within the hood. The wet bench is equipped with a sink which has both city water and deionized water running to it. The city water can be turned on by turning a nozzle located on the front of the wet bench, while the deionized water can be turned on by pressing the foot pedals located at the base of the wet bench. There is also a deionized water spray gun located at the front of the wet bench. A nitrogen gun for drying your samples with filtered nitrogen can be found at the front of the wet bench as well. Each of the wet benches in the clean room are equipped with small shelving units, which hold items such as pH test strips, chemical warning forms, calcium gluconate gel, razor blades, glass slides, text wipes, and general use solvents such as isopropanol, methanol, and acetone. Prior to using the fume hood, you should inspect it to see if it is working properly. You should also make sure that the work area inside the hood is free of obstructions or spilled chemicals. You can test the airflow moving into the fume hood by holding a text wipe in the open area between the sash and the wet bench. You should notice the text wipe being pulled slightly inward. Each fume hood is equipped with an alarm that will sound if there is an improper amount of airflow, which could result from a malfunctioning hood or having too many obstructions inside the hood. Blocking too many of the small holes on the surface of the wet bench or the slotted vents at the back of the hood will impede the airflow and cause the alarm to sound. As a general rule of thumb, you should only have what you need inside the fume hood and nothing else. The same goes for other users who may be working in the fume hood beside you. If you feel that a fume hood isn't working properly, you should notify the clean room staff and then find another fume hood to work at. As was mentioned earlier, you should also inspect the work area inside the fume hood for any spilled chemicals. Because there is a sink inside the hood, it is quite common for there to be droplets of water on the surface of the wet bench, but you should never assume that something is just water. If you come across any liquid on the wet bench, you should perform a pH test using one of the test strips located on the shelving unit attached to the fume hood. This should be done using acid gloves. If you find that the liquid has a pH of 7 or is a very small amount of something with a high or low pH, you may wipe it up with text wipes and dispose of them in a nearby trash can, with your acid gloves still on, of course. If there happens to be a large amount of liquid with a high or low pH, you should immediately notify the clean room staff. Large chemical spills must always be handled by staff members. For your own safety, as well as the safety of others in the clean room, you should never use a fume hood that doesn't appear to be working properly. Likewise, you should never use one that is cluttered or has a large amount of spilled chemical in it. We don't want fumes to escape the fume hood, and we don't want to create any potential for incompatible chemicals to mix. We also don't want any injuries from chemical exposure to be sustained. Let's now discuss the required personal protective equipment, or PPE, used when handling acids or bases in the clean room. Whenever you use acids or bases in the fume hood, you must always wear the required PPE in the appropriate manner. The required PPE consists of a face shield, a long sleeve chemical resistant apron, and acid gloves. There should be a face shield and an apron at each fume hood in the clean room. The acid gloves can be found in the clean room supply storage area. Spare face shields and aprons can be found here as well. 
When you put on the PPE, it should be done in the following order. The first item that you will put on is a chemical resistant apron. Prior to putting the apron on, you should inspect the front of it for any tears, dampness, or residue. You may slide the top tie over your head and place your arms through the sleeves. There is another optional tie on the lower back portion of the apron. If you wish to use this, it must be tied in the back and not the front. The idea is to keep any chemicals that you might spill on the front of the apron off of the tie, which at some point might be touched by an ungloved hand. If at any time you feel that an apron is unsafe from being damaged or from chemical contamination, feel free to grab a new one from the cleanroom supply storage area. Once you've put the apron on, the next items to put on will be the acid gloves. Each pair of gloves are individually wrapped and are one-time use, meaning that you will dispose of them when you are done working in the fume lid or handling chemicals. These gloves are intended to be worn over the standard nitrile cleanroom gloves and are the only gloves you should use when handling acids or bases. Prior to putting the gloves on, you should inspect them for leaks. This can be done by inflating each glove with the nitrogen gun located on the front of the wet bench. If you are confident that there are no leaks in the gloves, you may put them on. The gloves should be pulled over the sleeves of the aprons and then cuffed. Cuffing is done by folding the sleeve of the glove inside out over itself. The idea is that the cuffs will catch any chemicals that you may have on your hands from dripping onto the sleeves of the apron and then back inside of your gloves. On a side note, whenever you are handling bottles of acids or bases, especially bottles that have already been opened, it is a good idea to wear acid gloves. There is always the chance that there will be residual chemical on the outside of the bottle from when a previous user has poured it. Once you've put the gloves on and cuffed them, the final item to put on will be the face shield. Try not to handle the actual shield when putting it on. This is to prevent any contact with chemical residue that might have been splashed on the shield from prior use. The sides of the headband on the face shield can be adjusted by turning a knob on the back of your head. When all the required PPE is worn properly, it should be thoroughly protected when handling chemicals in the fume hood. With the exception of using acid gloves to transfer chemicals from one location to another, PPE is to not be worn in any area other than the one around the fume hood. This is to prevent any chemicals that may have come in contact with the PPE from being spread throughout the cleanroom. The maximum number of people who can use the fume hood at one time is two. If one person working at the fume hood has PPE on, then the other person is required to wear it as well. This is to protect both people from the chemicals in use. When you have finished working in the fume hood and are ready to remove your PPE, it should be done in the following order. The acid gloves should be removed first. This should be done by pinching the cuffs and pulling them so the gloves come off inside out. This is to keep any residual chemicals that may be on the gloves contained. They can then be disposed of in a nearby trash can. The next item to take off will be the face shield. The last item to take off is the chemical resistant apron, which should be hung up on the fume hood along with the face shield. Let's now go on to discuss where the specific types of chemicals are stored and the proper method for transporting chemicals from one location to another. There are chemical storage cabinets found next to each fume hood within the clean room. Each cabinet is designated for a specific type of chemical. The system is straightforward and should be fairly easy to understand. Acids are to be stored in the cabinets marked with an A. Bases are to be stored in the cabinets marked with a B. Oxidizers are to be stored in the cabinets marked with an O. Photoresist and polymers are to be stored in the cabinets marked with a P. Flammables are to be stored in the cabinets marked with an F. Inorganics are to be stored in the cabinets marked with an I. In most cases, you should be able to find any facility provided chemicals within one of these storage cabinets. If a particular chemical cannot be found, there are additional chemical storage cabinets located in the cleanroom supply storage area. The general use solvent bottles can be refilled in this area as well. If a particular chemical cannot be found here, you may need to call the cleanroom staff. They will be able to retrieve the chemical from the facility's chemical storage area. The phone numbers for the cleanroom staff offices are 50057 and 50058. 
When you request a chemical to be delivered to the clean room, it will be done via the chemical dumb waiter, which is located in the clean room wipe down area. Regardless of the type of chemical or the size of the bottle, whenever you're transporting a chemical from one location to another, it should be done using a bottle carrier. Bottle carriers act as added protection for chemical bottles in that they lessen the chance for a bottle to break or be punctured during transport. They can also help contain a leak if the integrity of the bottle or the cap is compromised. Bottle carriers are kept in the cleanroom supply storage area. They can usually be found next to the chemical storage cabinets in the cleanroom as well. Chemical bottles should also never be left on the floor. This is to prevent them from being accidentally kicked over. When you have a chemical bottle out and are not using it, it needs to be sitting on an elevated surface like a table or inside the fume hood. Once you're confident that a fume hood is clean enough and safe enough to work in, you may begin prepping to pour your chemicals. The first thing you should do before doing anything else is fill out a chemical warning form. This is to prevent any confusion over what a chemical is if you should need to leave the area. You will need to fill one out for each chemical or solution you intend to use. The chemical warning forms are green in color and can be found in several locations. They can be found on the fume hood shelving units and on the door of one of the labware storage cabinets. If you are unable to find one in either of these locations, please notify the cleanroom staff. Once you have acquired a chemical warning form, you will need to write the following on it. Your name, a phone number you can be reached at, the chemical or solution in use, the date and time it was poured, the date and time you intend to remove it, and all the dangers that apply. With the chemical warning form properly filled out, you can now begin gathering the labware you need to use from the storage cabinet. Make sure that you use the appropriate chemically compatible labware for the chemicals you intend to use. For instance, Hydrofluoric acid will etch through glass, so the labware you use must be made of polyethylene or Teflon. As a general rule of thumb, use labware that is made of the same type of material that the bottle of the chemical came in is made of. The labware should be clean, dry, and free of any kind of residue when it's pulled from the cabinet. It should also be returned to the cabinet in the same condition when you are done with it. Again, we don't want to create any potential for incompatible chemicals to mix. Once you have the appropriate labware selected, you can now retrieve the chemical you intend to use. Remember to use a bottle carrier, and if it is an acid or a base, it is suggested that you wear acid gloves when handling the bottle. Once everything is safely inside the fume hood, you can begin putting your PPE on in the appropriate order and manner. With your PPE on and the chemical warning form in place, you can begin pouring your chemical. At no time should you ever remove a poured chemical or an open bottle from under the safety of the fume hood. When you're pouring a chemical, it is very important that you do it with two hands in order to prevent spillage of the chemical or the dropping of the bottle. Wipe the bottle off with a Tex wipe and replace the cap when you are done pouring from it. If you need to measure out a specific quantity using a graduated cylinder, you should do so by first pouring the chemical into a small beaker and then into the graduated cylinder. It is much easier to pour from a small beaker into a narrow tube than it is with a full bottle. In addition, it is good practice to not pour more chemicals than is needed for your process in order to conserve the inventory and to have less to dispose of when you are finished. If you are using more than one type of chemical, make sure that you thoroughly rinse off and dry any labware you intend to reuse. When you are rinsing anything that is contained in chemicals, you must always rinse it three times with deionized water. You should also rinse and dry your gloves if you happen to get any chemicals on them. When you are done with your process, you will need to properly dispose of any chemicals that you use. If you intend to keep any leftover chemicals, they will need to be stored in a chemically compatible container, properly labeled, and then stored in a chemical storage cabinet with the same types of chemicals. You should never pour any chemical back into its original container. This is to prevent any contamination or adverse reactions from occurring. If you happen to use the rest of a chemical in a bottle, you also need to rinse the empty bottle out three times with running water and then dry the outside of it off. The bottle should then be placed on the rinse bottle cart in the cleanroom supply storage area, but only after you've cleaned up your work area and removed your PPE.
Once you have done this, you will need to take a lab marker and write rinse directly on the bottle and write R on the bottle cap. When disposing of waste chemicals, it is extremely important that you adhere to all the rules that have been implemented by the cleanroom staff. The staff has gone to great lengths to make waste disposal easy to understand, as you can see through much of the signage in the cleanroom. When disposing of acids or bases, you may pour them down the sink drain with the water running. You should allow the water to run for several minutes in order to flush as much of the chemical out as possible. If the chemicals have been heated, you must let them cool to room temperature before you pour them down the drain. When disposing of solvents, they must be poured in the solvent waste carboys in the fume hood. In the Marcus clean room, there is also an entire fume hood that is dedicated to the use of solvents. This fume hood is equipped with two drains for solvent disposal. One is for halogenated solvents, such as trichloroethylene and chloroform. The other drain is for non-halogenated solvents, such as acetone, isopropanol, and methanol. Acids and bases are to never be used in the solvent fume hood, or to be poured in the solvent waste carboys. Solvents are to never be poured down the sinks, no matter which fume hood you are using. Solvents not only react violently with acids and bases, but they can also cause the drain seals on the sinks to deteriorate and can ultimately lead to drain failure, which would be very dangerous. Any chemical waste with metals in it is also not to be poured down the sink. You must dispose of this waste in a rinsed bottle, which you can retrieve from the rinsed bottle cart in the cleanroom supply storage area. Make sure that the bottle is chemically compatible. You should also write what type of waste it is on the bottle and then place it on the chemical waste cart, which can be found next to the rinse bottle cart. Bottled chemical waste will be disposed of by environmental health and safety. Once you have finished disposing of your chemicals, you should begin cleaning up the work area in and around the fume hood. The idea is to have it be as clean as it was when you first started using it. The labware should be thoroughly rinsed three times with deionized water and then dried. The surface of the wet bin should be wiped down so that there isn't any liquid left on it. Once you feel confident that the area is clean enough and safe enough, you can begin removing your PPE. At this point, you should return any labware to the storage cabinet and take any empty bottles or waste chemicals to the designated carts. Here at the IEN, we put a great amount of effort into protecting everyone within our facility. Much of that effort is placed in educating our users on how to be as safe as possible in the cleanroom environment. There is always the chance that an accident could happen. But the more informed we all are, should one come about, the better we will be able to handle the situation. Thank you very much for your time.